Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Newsroom. I'm your host, Umar Khalid. But today is the 29th of July, 2022. It's the last day of the week, and we've got lots to share with you. Let's begin without further delay. Our first segment today is going to be about Afghanistan and how the SCO is. Uh, uh, coming up as a very important platform to discuss the future of Afghanistan and how different countries are on the same wavelength when it comes to the future of our neighborhood country. In this context, Pakistan and China have also discussed in detail about how to move forward as far as Afghanistan is concerned. So, of course, the SCO becomes a very important platform. Also, our Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zadari sir, met with uh, the Interim Foreign Minister of Afghanistan also and a lot of important discussions were also held between the two um, uh, uh, colleagues at the, uh, this venue as well. This is going to be our first segment. The future of Afghanistan and the SO that serves as a platform to discuss uh, different uh, aspects for uh, the betterment of the Afghan people. Our second segment, ladies and gentlemen, concerns uh, the SCO as well and of course the engagements of the Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari Saab uh, as far as the SCO summit is concerned, he's met with a lot of important people. He's also attended uh, the meeting uh, of the SCO foreign ministers uh, conference. Uh, as you can see in the in the images in the parallel window, he also met with uh, uh, different uh, foreign ministers. The last one that he met was the Tajik foreign minister Sirojuddin uh, Muhriddin. And uh, this uh, Pakistan has also reiterated through Mr. Zardari about uh, what Pakistan aims to do as far as its contribution in the SCO is concerned. This is going to be our second segment. Our third story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns the United Nations General Assembly that has overwhelmingly adopted the historic resolution that declares access to a clean, healthy and sustainable environment as a universal human right. This resolution received 161 votes in favor, none against, and eight abstentions. And of course, Pakistan voted in favor of this resolution. How important is uh, this for the world and for Pakistan as well? This is our third story. Our fourth story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns the recent monsoon smell that has wreaked havoc across the country, uh, whether it be in Balochistan, in Sindh, in Khaver Pakhtunkhwa, in Punjab. Uh, there have been lots of casualties just in Balochistan. Over 100 people have have uh, uh, been killed by the rains. Uh, thousands of homes have been destroyed. Uh, around 8,000 homes have been destroyed as far as just Balochistan is concerned. Uh, if we go, go to the other regions or in general, around 356 people have died and 406 injured as the country has braced these severe rains uh, in these monsoon uh, region. And of course, the government has uh, taken different measures to counter and to help those who have been affected by the monsoon rains. This is our fourth story. And our final story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns Malala Yusuf Zai. Now, Malala Yusuf Zai represented Pakistan at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games. And she uh, shared a very important message for the athletes, saying that it was an honor to being here. And she said that uh, the athletes competing at the Games are a reminder that every child deserves a chance to reach his or her full potential and pursue his or her uh, dreams. This is an important message, and of course, we all know the effort she's been putting in as far as education is concerned. This is our last story. Let's begin with the very first segment, and that concerns Afghanistan, the future of Afghanistan, and the different discussions that were held at the SCO concerning uh, Afghanistan, including the meeting between the two foreign ministers of Afghanistan and Pakistan. More in the following report. After the hasty withdrawal of US and NATO forces from Afghanistan and the Taliban takeover of power in August 2021, instability and conflict gripped the war-ravaged country. As the humanitarian situation across the border spirals, Afghans are enduring grinding poverty, economic meltdown and food insecurity. Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari met his counterpart in the Taliban administration, Amir Khan Muttaki, on the sidelines of the Council of Foreign Ministers of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in Tashkent. Meeting between Foreign Minister Bhutto Zardari and Chinese top diplomat Wang Yi on the sidelines of the Council of Foreign Ministers of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization also took part in Tashkent. The two foreign ministers, while emphasizing the importance of peaceful, stable and connected Afghanistan, noted that it could become the fulcrum for enhanced regional trade and connectivity. Earlier, during a meeting between China's special envoy in Afghanistan, Yu Xiaoyong, and Foreign Secretary Sohail Mahmood at the Foreign Office in Islamabad, the possibility of extending CPEC to Afghanistan was discussed. A peaceful, stable, united, safe and secure Afghanistan is fundamental for prosperity and progress in the region, so Pakistan and China have reiterated the need for promoting people-to-people -people contacts, providing humanitarian assistance and increasing trade and transit capacity. 
Dr. Zulfikar Kazmi, Foreign Affairs Expert, joins us online. Dr. Saab, thank you very much to have joined us. Dr. Saab, Afghanistan is a country that Pakistan is extremely concerned about, not only in the wake of all the economic and humanitarian crisis that the country is engulfed in, but also for a political and stable future of the country. How important is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as a platform to ensure that stability? Me and uh, definitely it's a very important subject. We need to address it because Afghanistan, Pakistan and regional, regional situation is very important for peace and prosperity of that region. So about Afghanistan, while we are talking about uh, Shanghai conference and uh, it's, it's urgently needed that we should focus dire needs of uh, Afghanistan. But Afghanistan need at the moment that West should understand that there should be no further uh, sanctions on Afghanistan. There should be a chance to peace in Afghanistan. There should be a chance to peace and development in Afghanistan. So it's very important that while the world leaders are talking about that how they could bring development and peace and prosperity in Afghanistan, Pakistan role is very important because Pakistan believes in friendly and cooperative relationship. And friendly and cooperative relationship based on economic development and people-to-people -people contact, as Balawal Bhutto Zardari said, and I agree that what he said, because until we are not having a close contact of the people, and Afghan and Af Pakistani people, they are brothers. It's a brotherly country. So if we talk about Afghanistan, so we sh should show our passion, and we should show the results of that passion as well because it's very important that we are just giving statements or something. And uh, meanwhile, uh, when Afghanistan is suffering because of uh, some economic, uh, you know, situation and uh, many other things, you know, in the area uh, of development. So I, I believe that uh, there, will be a, there will be a very good solution for Afghan people with the help of Pakistan, China and uh, other countries as well. While uh, this Shanghai Cooperation Organization is talking about uh, peace and development in that region, America should think about that the reserves which have been seized, which have been frozen, they should resor uh, restore those uh, you know, reserves as well. Uh, Dr. Saab, do you feel that the SEO as a platform can exert some kind of a pressure on the United States or on the West so that they can... Uh, uh, give the aid or as you said the aid that has been frozen by the United States or the part that is being given now to the victims of 9-11 well that we cannot reclaim but the rest at least should be dispersed to the Afghan people at the earliest. Can that happen through the SCO? Yes, well, I think that all these uh, uh, you know issues which has directly hitting to Afghanistan their peace and development is very important because because if they have a peace, then we think about that how our region could move forward for the peace. Because China's role is very important now. China is not only economic power. China has a role in regional peace as well. While they are talking about that they will be, uh, you know, easing the issuance of visas, as I was uh, reading about one story about writers uh, of mm. writers uh, on Afghanistan, they were talking about that uh, we should, uh, you know, uh, ease not only the restrictions on uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, Afghanistan, uh, you know, why, why they, are, uh, they are suffering because of the embargo, because of the restrictions or something. Uh, they are talking about that how, pe as uh, uh, you have mentioned, and uh, and uh, there, there was uh, uh, you know uh, a talk about uh, talk about uh, uh, you know our foreign minister. Exactly, and, uh, of course, improving improving the current situation that Afghanistan is embroiled in. I'd like to now uh, refer you to China's role as far as stability in Afghanistan is concerned. Whether Wang Yi and Bilawal Bhutto Zadari Saab, when they met uh, on the sidelines of the SCO, they discussed, of course, Afghanistan and prosperity and the way forward, and of course the importance of trade relations in order to uh, strengthen Afghanistan. At the same time, 
China has always been behind Afghanistan and of course backing Afghanistan, whether it be on the important meeting that happened on the 31st of March where Chinese leader Xi Jinping uh, issued a strong backing for Afghanistan at the uh, National Regional Conference that was uh, participated by many important countries or even after that, despite the different you know, apprehensions that it has as, as far as terrorism is concerned or ETIM is concerned, apart from that, it wants to see a stable and a prosperous Afghanistan. Can Pakistan and China collectively do something in that regard? I am talking about the trade avenue. I would like to refer one thing. Maybe uh, I will be addressing your question later. But one thing, what, what Chinese uh, Foreign Minister Wang Ji, while he was talking a week ago with the you know, Afghan um, uh, Foreign Minister, uh, Mr. Muttaki, he said that we want to you know, enhance the trade of Afghanistan. And they said that 90%, 98%, you know, uh, Afghan trade will be tax-free in, in China. So they want to encourage Afghanistan and they want to encourage the regional powers as well that how they could cooperate. And uh, I think that uh, this uh, uh, summit is very important. And the uh, upcoming summit in September, I think they will be the paving, a way, paving a way for mm. uh, uh, further, you know, uh, development uh, which is needed in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, there is there is urgently needed, you know, a dialogue between between the, these three countries as well. You know, I know that many countries are involved in this uh, summit, but China, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. If they will be talking about what are the real needs of Afghanistan and how they could bring together all that agenda and enforce in Afghanistan, not friendly, mm. I mean that how they could how they could talk about that, how they could cooperate. Even most of the countries still have not, you know, recognized Afghanistan. So this is another issue, and even the China have not uh, recognized, but they are cooperating. They have an open heart. So this is what this conference should focus that in the future, when they will be talking in September, the uh, in the summit, what they but should But of course, this is this the foreign, the for, foreign uh, ministers conference lays the ground for all that is going to be discussed at uh, the heads of state meeting that is going to be held in September of uh, the heads of all the SCO countries. Now, coming to the meeting between Amir Khan Muttaki and uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari Saab, uh, the foreign ministers of both Afghanistan and Pakistan, there was this commitment to a peaceful and prosperous Afghanistan. How do you feel Pakistan can contribute to that? It has already been contributing to that, helping Afghanistan out, but how can it further contribute to a prosperous and, of course, a peaceful Afghanistan? Even Pakistan is not talking about the contribution towards, you know, development. They are talking about the fundamental of uh, Afghanistan, how they could help. And Pakistan was uh, the only country which had been suffered because of uh, uh, Afghanistan. So, Bilawal Bhutto, what uh, Bilawal Bhutto and uh, uh, Muttaki uh, was talking about, it's, it's, it's a reality, and we should admit the realities, how, how we could, you know, cooperate and how we could help Afghanistan in that perspective where peace and development could come to uh, Afghanistan. Because Afghanistan's peace and development is directly, you know, related to Pakistan as well. And the world powers should understand how they could assist and help these two countries who they are not only friendly, who they are brotherly countries. They, they think they have the borders, but they're in their hearts. They don't have any border even, you know. So I think that uh, issues are there. Definitely issues are there. And Pakistan understand, Afghanistan understand. And uh, President, you know, uh, uh, government of Pakistan, while uh, Bilawal Bhutto is talking about uh, peace and development, because Bilawal Bhutto knows what is peace because they have been suffered because of uh, intolerance, because of the violence. So people to people contact, if Blavel Bhutto was talking about, is urgently needed now, you mm -hmm. know, in, in that area. And I think that China could assist because China and Pakistan's friendly and cooperative relationship is very important. 
and let's China talk about and regional Pakistan. connectivity dr zulfikar let's talk about regional connectivity whether it be china or pakistan both have insisted on that as, so as to stabilize uh, afghanistan uh, in the near future uh, from the chinese side there is that commitment to extend the china pakistan economic corridor into afghanistan afghanistan has also uh, more or less agreed to it from the pakistani side there is also the commitment for regional connectivity th through projects such as tapi or kasa 1000 or the tap Uh, how important do you feel these projects are as far as stabilizing or uh, strengthening afghanistan's economy is concerned i think the trade is a is a greatest way these are two aspects one is the trade and the other one is that as i uh, you are talking about that the people to people contact and both are interlinked so trade should be focused in pakistan and what china has said it's very uh, urgent to uh, and uh, important to understand china said that uh, uh, pakistan economic uh, corridor should be extended uh, to, uh, to afghanistan and uh, the, that could bring more prosperity and more peace to afghanistan so pakistan is playing its role and pakistan will be playing its role because it's it's a mutual and uh, you know uh, uh, benefit of uh, both countries while they have been suffered because of many things you know as we know so trade is most important because trade could bring uh, more prosperity in uh, afghanistan and people to people co contact will bring more contact um, uh, more you know prosperity in pakistan and they will be overcoming on all those issues which afghanistan is facing and meanwhile oh. there is a, there should be a very clear message to west while they talk about why the extremism is why the violence is why people are not peaceful they should understand that peace is come through trade people to people contact help and how they could help how they could foster that friendly and cooperative relationship through trade and to helping uh, afghan people afghan people have been suffered you know and uh, pakistani people have been suffered they have a common desire and common will and even they have a skill to overcome on all those issues but they need a moral support a trade trade support and economic support in that region until they don't have it china uh, you know china but china is saying china uh, it's a big statement when they say uh, that uh, they will be you know easing the restrictions on visas and uh, they, even they don't have much restrictions even before but they said they will be making it more easy so they are even talking about that more than 90% trade uh, and uh, imports will be tax free so this is what uh, china has taken the right direction but uh, dr zulfikar the uh, more needs to be done you know and uh, you talked about the involvement yeah, of the west and you talked uh, you, need, Indeed, you talked about the involvement I, I of the important I, organizations that need to step in as far as yeah. helping afghanistan yes. in this uh, current uh, state of affairs or it is embroiled is, is concerned when you talk of uh, and uh, of the afghan people they have been they have seen conflict since the last four decades pakistan has always been on their side but pakistan has also more or less uh, Uh, born the brunt somehow of that in the form of the refugees that have come into Pakistan, and they have always been welcomed in Pakistan. But those refugees have also increased as per a United Nations report in the last year itself. Uh, uh, there is a huge number uh, of influx of refugees from Afghanistan to Pakistan, and those refugees who are in Pakistan, there is a huge number that does not want to return to Afghanistan. How should Pakistan endeavour in order to create that stable environment so that the refugees can return to their country? i think that pakistan is uh, already playing its role but it's need to be more defined and uh, because when we talk about the violence in afghanistan it means it's not violence only in hmm. afghanistan territory it's violence in the region so why china is concerned why other countries concerned so they should ha have a unanimous you know action plan to curb all those uh, uh, you know uh, issues and problems what is uh, uh, afghanistan is facing definitely uh, uh, previously uh, many things we have seen that in the name of uh, peace but it was not in the name of peace it was mm. just to gain the power you know but in the name of peace if we want to talk that then there should be a, a you know constant dialogue between these countries they should be 
make uh, a promotion of uh, uh, trade. There should be people to people contact and the uh, Western uh, you know, bloc should understand that how they could help. Because without their, without their help and support, it will be a dream in Afghanistan. Because That is so true. The, you know, where one needs the entire support of the com communities and organizations such as the SCO, such as the United Nations, such as the West, such as the uh, European yeah. Union, and of course, uh, the United States of America. And without the help of all of these combined, Afghanistan uh, will not be able to research the way it needs to research because uh, Afghanistan is in need of the help of every single player, every single global player that can help. Pakistan has been helping it as much as it can. Pakistan has also so highlighted the Afghan issue on so many different fora. So has China, in fact. And both the countries have that commitment uh, to bring China, to bring Afghanistan, in fact, out of the current crisis that it is embroiled in. That is what uh, the SEO serves as, uh, of course, that platform where that could be discussed and that has been discussed. Thank you very much, Dr. Zulfikar Kazmi, international affairs expert, Thank who have joined us, who have talked to us about the role of Afghanistan uh, and, of course, the topic of Afghanistan, a stable Afghanistan that has been discussed at the SEO Council of Foreign ministers meeting that is being held in Uzbekistan. Let's come to our second story, ladies and gentlemen, and that also concerns the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and our Foreign Minister Bilal Bhutto Zadari Saab, who's met with Wang Yi, his uh, Chinese counterpart, who's met with Amir Khan Muttaki, his Afghan counterpart, who's met with his Tajik uh, counterpart, Sirujuddin uh, Muhyiddin, as well. Uh, and of course, he has participated in the Council of Foreign Ministers. What he had to say, that and more, we'll be discussing in this segment, but after this report. Regional organizations like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization are perhaps the best fora to strengthen regional security and preserve world peace. The SCO is a major trans-regional multilateral organization with eight members, including China and Russia. SCO countries are home to 41% of the global population and account for 23% of the global GDP. The resolve of the SCO to fight the menace of terrorism, promoting regional peace and security, and working for shared economic prosperity are very very much in harmony with interests of Pakistan. Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari will lead Pakistan's delegation to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Council of Foreign Ministers meeting in Tashkent, and the invitation to attend this meeting was extended by the Acting Foreign Minister of Uzbekistan. Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Ambassador Zhang Ming earlier visited Pakistan. The four-day visit of the SCO Secretary General provided an important opportunity for consultations at the highest level and great understanding of Pakistan's expectations from the organization. Prime Minister Mia Muhammad Shahbaz Sharif assured Pakistan's full support in fulfillment of the purposes and objectives of the SCO. Appreciating the comprehensive development agenda of the SCO, the Prime Minister emphasized that the core purpose of the entity remained the growth and prosperity of the SCO region. Now, as far as Pakistan's commitment to, uh, towards the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is concerned, it is no hidden fact that Pakistan has contributed a lot as far as uh, the SCO and the principles and the objectives of the SCO are concerned. Also, at this Council of Foreign Ministers meeting uh, that is being held in Uzbekistan, uh, Pakistan has reaffirmed the same. That was also stated by the Foreign Office spokesperson when he talked to media today. He said uh, that uh, the Bilawal Bhutto Zadari Saab talked about a lot of important things, uh, challenges that included the situation in Afghanistan, importance of averting an economic or humanitarian crisis, combating terrorism, we've all seen that in the region, and managing the ancillary efforts of the COVID-19 pandemic. All the countries including Pakistan have been affected by this pandemic and continue to be affected, including reduction, of course, in trade flows, declining production, rising inflation, growing unemployment are just some of the uh, re results of this pandemic that have come out and not in a positive manner. He also has emphasized the importance of multilateralism, of cooperative interest state relations, shared goals for shared prosperity, and also stressed during, uh, while of course he was addressing the SCO Council of Foreign Ministers, uh, on enhancing connectivity between uh, the members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, digitalization of uh, businesses so that uh, business opportunities could become more rampant, sustainability of e-commerce ecosystem in this day and age. This is the future for uh, commerce, that is the e-commerce ecosystem that also could be, should be and needs to be developed between the SCO countries and 
also build a more resilient and economic model as far as each country that represents the SCO and collectively the SCO as an organization as well. He also uh, uh, has had uh, meetings with a lot of important counterparts from other uh, member countries of the SCO. He met with Wang Yi, the Chinese foreign minister. He met with Amir Khan Muttaki, who is the Afghan foreign minister. He also met with uh, the Tajik uh, foreign minister. He's also to meet with uh, the Kazakh, the Russian, uh, the Uzbek, the Kyrgyz uh, foreign ministers as well. And we also know that uh, the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization Secretary General uh, Zhang Ming had visited Pakistan for four days uh, last week also, and that was also an important visit uh, to highlight Pakistan's importance within the SEO and the role that Pakistan needs to play within the SEO and has been playing. We've been joined by our guest, Mustafa Abdullah Baloch, he's a foreign affairs expert. Baloch, sir, thank you very much to have joined us. Uh, Pakistan's role, Pakistan's commitment, as far as the SEO is concerned, is no hidden secret. Pakistan has always been one of the most committed members of the SEO. This meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers that lays the ground for the Heads of State meeting that is going to be held in September. How important in your point of view is this for highlighting Pakistan's role within the ambit of the SEO? Uh, thank you so much for having me on your show. And uh, the uh, Shanghai Corporation Organization is a Eurasian uh, uh, political, economic and uh, uh, military organization that we believe in bringing st uh, stability in the region. And uh, Pakistan has been the part of this organization since 2017. And the recent visit of foreign minister over there is, it has been very successful. And uh, the engagement with, with uh, Afghan counterpart and uh, uh, Chinese counterpart has been also very productive because the discussions uh, related to CPEC and uh, the peace in Afghanistan has also been discussed. So all in all, this has been a very uh, productive uh, event for Pakistan and uh, definitely sooner we will see the fruits of this event. All right. Uh, Balot Saab, when uh, we look at uh, Pakistan's involvement in the SEO, and especially with context to uh, this SEO Council of Foreign Ministers meeting, I'd like to refer you to what the spokesperson of the Foreign Office said as far as Pakistan's perspective on the SEO that was also highlighted when uh, our Foreign Minister addressed uh, the, this auspicious organization. He talked about uh, the challenges and he talked about three important challenges, the situation in Afghanistan and the uh, importance of averting an economic or humanitarian crisis terrorism and how to combat it and of course the uh, effects of uh, COVID-19 that have affected society and employment and so many other factors uh, in all of the countries that are part of the SEO. What should be and how should the countries of the SEO resolve to fight these three menaces? See, actually uh, there is a humanitarian crisis going on in Afghanistan and uh, the shift of government and, and, and after the US withdrawal there has been quite difficulties over there and uh, obviously uh, uh, majorly uh, most of the countries in the West have not recognized this government. So, but we are in this region and Pakistan has to, you know, uh, engage with uh, the current Afghan government and uh, uh, help them out in all this humanitarian crisis because obviously there's a buffer between uh, both the borders and uh, uh, so far the meeting of uh, foreign minister over there was uh, uh, regarding uh, the Afghan uh, uh, prosperity and because if Afghanistan is uh, progressing, then obviously we are also progressing. It, 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 we, we believe in trade and we also want uh, Afghanistan to have uh, you know, a relationship with uh, Pakistan, which uh, should be uh, on a uh, uh, progressive mode and uh, definitely uh, China would also help in this regard. All right, Balot sahab, also let's uh, talk about the importance of uh, different factors that were emphasized uh, while uh, Bilawal Bhutto Sardari sahab was addressing the Council of Foreign Ministers. He talked about multilateralism, cooperative interstate relations and shared goals for a shared prosperity. Uh, how to go about these three? And do you feel that the SEO countries that also include India are uh, on the same page when it comes to that? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing that if they are, if India, uh, I don't know about India, but others are probably on the same page because the, all these countries want uh, to, you know, rebuild their economy and we are all facing hmm. this recession mode. So definitely uh, 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 this bilateral uh, ties and uh, these multilateral ties will benefit uh, each and every country participating in the summit. So. Uh, uh, Sooner or later, we have but to. But is this the achieve, region, achievable? Balot sahab, is it achievable? Multilateralism, for example, is it achievable in the near future or is it going to take a long time? Uh, see, it, it will take some time, but there, there is no other option right now. 
see if if, if oh, all see the current economic position of Pakistan is is in front of you. We have to engage with our neighbors. We we have to engage with mm. the with the countries in this region. Otherwise, there is like um, it, it's going to be very difficult for us. We can't rely on those countries who are far far away from us. True, true. So if when we you look engage at, with what, each other, and help out. Yeah. All right. When you look at cooperative interstate relations, when you look at the tense, uh, the tensions that exist between India and Pakistan, for example, I'm just stating one of uh, of, of the examples that are that is of course the most important one as well as far as the SEU is concerned. But this and so much more. Uh, do you feel there could be some kind of a cooperation within the ambit of uh, the SEU as far as those countries that are uh, that have uh, uh, rising tensions between each other? See. Uh, um, if, if if there's an ultimate uh, uh, condition which is uh, like uh, for for progress and for for uh, regional progress then india should also you know uh, uh, move forward and you know they, they need to get out of this uh, egoistic uh, environment where they are living in and they have to uh, you know Im uh, uh, amalgamate in this region and uh, you know uh, build rebuild their ties with uh, with especially with pakistan and if you if they want to if they want this region to grow Hmm. When you look at shared goals for shared prosperity, uh, I, I'd like to understand because as human beings, we like to share but not too much. Do you feel at a state level when it comes to so many different countries together, can we share uh, our uh, goals for a shared responsibility? Can we do that? And if, if so, what are the most important avenues for this shared prosperity? See, there is a lot of things which we can uh, uh, you know, work on this, these shared goals. Like uh, we can work on uh, tourism, uh, like uh, where Pakistan yeah, true, can also true, play a very true. important role. And uh, there are major countries like Uzbekistan itself is a very beautiful country where people uh, go for tourism. And Pakistan can, you know, uh, you know, uh, encourage people from Pakistan to have, uh, you know, uh, consider this country for tourism. The so point is, there are a lot of things in, uh, in 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 the sector of industries. Pakistan is. Uh, not bad. The Pakistan is uh, obviously a very uh, competent country, uh, and uh, the Pakistan can uh, give a, a lending hand to the uh, you know up uh, growing countries in, uh, in in front in in this field. All right, uh, Mustafa. Also, I'd like to understand when uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zadari Sahab talks about uh, uh, enhancing connectivity or digi uh, digitizing businesses. What does he exactly mean by that, and how important can that be within the context of the SEO? See, digitizing, uh, digitizing uh, the the business uh, and environment and economic things with, uh, would uh, is is a coming thing, and it's like uh, it's growing everywhere. It's growing in the West, and we are far far behind in this sector. So definitely, if we cooperate uh, with all these countries in SEO, so it will it will be beneficial for all. All right. What about the in the e-commerce ecosystem and, of course, a more resilient economic model? Economy is the key word, isn't it? Whether it concerns Pakistan or other countries within the SEO, uh, with all that is engulfing the world, whether it be the Ukraine-Russia war, whether it be what the condition in Afghanistan is, what the situation in Sri Lanka is, you know, it 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 uh, puts a lot of communities and countries in a state of. Uh, not despair, but apprehension of what could happen to them in the coming weeks and months if the situation continues to grow within uh, this region. How important does an e-commerce ecosystem uh, become in this day and age, in this current scenario, to make our economy more resilient? Um, actually, it's the need of the hour, and, 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 and China can uh, play a very important role in this, especially China can help Pakistan, and it's already helping Pakistan via CPEC. So uh, this 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 this, uh, this is a very important sector, and uh, Pakistan should also uh, you know consider it uh, like uh, uh, very important because uh, in the coming days, e-commerce and e-business is uh, like Amazon and everything like uh, uh, the e-commerce they are they are growing in the West, and we are far behind in this sector. So if we grow in this in this sector, and and all the countries uh, participating in SEO, if they all uh, unite in this thing in IT and e-commerce, then it will be beneficial for all. All right. Uh, also, Mustafa, you know, uh, Bilal Bhutto Dari Sahib has met with Amir Khan Muttaki, he's met with Mr. Wongi, he's met with his uh, Tajik counterpart, he's to meet a lot of other counterparts as well from the other countries of the SEO. Uh, let's start with China. How important do you feel? Uh, 
uh, is the relationship between China and Pakistan and how can that be further strengthened uh, within the ambit of the SCO. We've also seen the Secretary General of uh, the SCO who was here last week on a four-day visit and there were very important discussions that were held during his visit to Pakistan. What's your take on that? Unfortunately, the relationship with, with, with China was uh, uh, like uh, during the previous government. And uh, it, 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 it's taking time to rebuild that uh, relationship because China has been a very important neighbor of Pakistan and it, it has helped Pakistan in toughest times. So, uh, the, uh, Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto has, uh, since day one, he has tried to rebuild the ties with all those countries which were sad during the uh, Imran Khan's tenure. So, like, if you see the, the 2.3 billion. Uh, uh, aid which uh, China gave, uh, the loan which China gave to Pakistan was after which, uh, Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto's visit to China. So, so, so the, the relationship is becoming better day by day and I hope that if uh, we continue to uh, strengthen the ties with China and obviously CPEC was halted during uh, Imran Khan's tenure, unfortunately. And uh, obviously it, the, 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 uh, the loss was of the, of the nation, of the country because Pakistan was growing. CPEG is also obviously a helping, uh, you know, uh, project for Pakistan. The, the infrastructure, the agriculture, the IT sector, they grow with this, with CPEG. So uh, I hope that uh, in coming days, CPEG and uh, will, uh, will 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 grow further, and uh, ties with Pakistan, Pakistan, ties between Pakistan and China will be strengthened. Mustafa, do you feel Pakistan and China collectively can strengthen the Shanghai spirit of the SCO? Definitely. I guess the, the major countries in this or, uh, organization are Pakistan and China because they, they, they combinedly, they can, they can help, uh, first of all, they can help Afghanistan, which is, uh, which is a war-torn country and uh, the people over there are suffering. So definitely uh, China and Pakistan collectively can help a country. Afghanistan is huge and obviously the people over there, they have, they have no other option. Where can they go? So they have to live over there, they, they need some aid, they need some help and only Pakistan and China can do this. So in terms of humanitarian ground, yes, Pakistan and China can play a very important role in terms of development side, yes, China will play a very important role in this uh, summit and uh, will obviously uh, give uh, a, a, a positive sign in the summit for the coming days, for the coming years. All right, Mustafa, also one of the core objectives of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is uh, strengthening regional peace, security and stability. We don't see that much of uh, stability uh, as far as uh, this region is concerned and I'm referring to the tensions between Pakistan and India, what is happening in Afghanistan and then what is happening in Sri Lanka. Uh, could the SCO be that, you know, um, basis on which uh, these countries could stabilize themselves, the situations could stabilize themselves? Definitely, definitely. I think uh, SEO will play a vital role in this. And uh, as far as uh, Sri Lanka is concerned, obviously there are very uh, upsetting, uh, you know, situation going over there. And uh, similarly, as I told you in Afghanistan, the situation, as we see, we see maybe, uh, I, I heard that today also there was a blast in Kabul. So, so the situation in Afghanistan is not pretty much good. And, and, and I guess that, that uh, the, the, the 2022 uh, summit of SEO will definitely, uh, you know, try to uh, put forward this uh, aspect of All right. Mustafa, when it comes to the China-Pakistan economic corridor, that is, of course, one of the highlights of the Belt and Road Initiative of China. China also wants to involve Afghanistan. It wants to involve the Central Asian countries. And, of course, all of these are part of uh, the SCO as well. Uh, do you feel the SCO can also serve a pla as an important platform to, you know, uh, extend uh, the China-Pakistan economic corridor with uh, the approval of all the member countries? Yes, uh, I guess so, and and I believe that this this the the the, the, the talks regarding CPEC uh, were also held between uh, Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto and his Chinese counterpart, where they uh, reaffirmed uh, about uh, the uh, uh, strengthening the ties and uh, uh, uplifting this project, which was obviously halted during the past tenure. So I guess the the, the, the CPEC will grow and, 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 and all the participants in, of SEO will also, uh, you know, be beneficial from this project. All right. Uh, Mustafa, Afghanistan, we all know the situation that it is in and I've also talked to my previous guest on the very issue. But what's your take on Afghanistan and how the SEO could collectively stabilize uh, 
uh, our neighborhood country Pakistan has been helping it we all know that we've talked about that in the past as well uh, whether through enhancing trade with uh, Afghanistan through importing coal and of course providing wheat and other initiatives uh, whether it be by accepting the refugees from Afghanistan into Pakistan how much uh, can other countries also contribute as far as stabilizing Afghanistan is concerned actually uh, China is the only country which I believe as as, as a huge powerful country can help Afghanistan in, in this situation because China is, is itself in this region. We, it, uh, it, it, it was a uh, you know uh, unfair thing which happened with Afghanistan that after 20 years of war, uh, the U.S. left without uh, you know giving any development aid or any any sort of aid for rebuilding the whole country, which was obviously war torn for uh, almost two, uh, two decades. Of so course. they left and they left with uh, nothing. Uh, the, hmm. the people, the, 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 all those translators over there in Afghanistan, and all those people who helped the U.S. Army were left, uh, uh, you know, uh, on their own. So definitely, China is obviously in the region, and China will definitely want peace in Afghanistan, and China will definitely want to, uh, you know, help Afghanistan so that Afghanistan should also grow in this region and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, like in terms of economy, this whole region becomes a, a big power, and which I see in coming days, the inflation countries would be uh, a powerful zone. Inshallah, inshallah. Let's hope for the best. Of course, uh, Mustafa, and at the same time, we are also looking forward to September and the meeting of the heads of state uh, of uh, the SCO to see how uh, they get jointly resolve the issues that plague this region. Nevertheless, this is a very important moot for the member countries of the SCO, and Pakistan has been very ably represented by our former minister, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari Sahib, and of course, this meeting is being held in Tashkent in Uzbekistan. Uh, we will, inshallah, be uh, sharing more details as they come as far as the different uh, issues that were discussed with the other foreign ministers of the SU are concerned. Let's come to our uh, uh, last three stories very quickly. Uh, the first concerns the United Nations, the United Nations General Assembly that has declared access to a clean, healthy environment as a universal human right. Now, this is extremely important. We know how important is a clean environment, how important is a healthy environment for our society, for our people. And to declare that uh, a human right, I think, is the need of the, was the need of the hour since quite some time. But nevertheless, better late than never. The resolution that was passed by the United Nations General Assembly received 161 votes in favor, none against. Eight uh, countries abstained. Pakistan, of course, as uh, we all knew, want, uh, voted in favor of this resolution, said that while it supports the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. And this is what also Pakistan wants with all the issues that uh, pertain uh, to Pakistan and climate change as well. Pakistan's Ambassador Muni Akram has said any new human right could only be legally recognized through negotiating a convention at relevant intergovernmental fora on climate change and the environment. A right step in the right direction indeed. Let's come to our fourth story, and that concerns, of course, uh, rain that has hit Pakistan. Uh, a number of casualties across uh, the country, whether it be in Balochistan, where at least 100 people have been killed, thousands, around 6,000 homes have been destroyed as far as Balochistan is concerned. 93 people have been killed in Sindh, over 100, uh, we, as I said, in Balochistan. And the number of casualties, if you look at the country, 356 people uh, have passed away, 406 injured. Uh, so, of course, uh, the government has reacted, and uh, the uh, Premier Shabash Sharif has formed a special committee to assess the damage in the affected areas. This body is going to be uh, visiting the affected areas in the next four days. On the 4th of August, a short, mid and long term plans are going to be uh, put into perspective. And the relevant ministries and institutions have also been instructed by the Premier. He has also said that under climate change was an undeniable uh, reality of our times. He has also said uh, that uh, the aid that will be given to the injured and affected households should be increased from 50,000 rupees to 200,000 rupees. Also, uh, the partially affected houses will be given uh, 25, uh, 250,000 uh, rupees and the uh, completely affected houses will be now given 500,000 rupees. Also, compensation for the victims who were killed uh, in a boat that was capsized in Rahim Yar Khan district and many other uh, efforts that uh, have been uh, put uh, forward. One 106 people, just to give you a number of the casualties, 106 people have uh, passed away in Balochistan, 90 in Sindh, 69 in Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, 76 in Punjab, 8 in Bhagat Baldistan, 6 in Azad Jammu and Kashmir, and 1 in Islamabad. 406 people have been injured. 
right step in the right direction at the right time before it was way too late for the government to react. Uh, and of course, we know that these rains are extraordinary. We know that climate change is one of the basic causes because of which we are seeing such devastation and the way the rains have affected uh, Pakistan and the measures come at the right time. Let's hope that the measures also are implemented at the right time. And finally, let's come to the opening ceremony of uh, the Commonwealth Games. Ladies and gentlemen, Malala Yousafzai, the Nobel laureate, uh, was uh, representing Pakistan at this opening ceremony where Prince Charles attended the ceremony in place of Queen Elizabeth. She shared, uh, Malala Yousafzai at, at that time, shared a very important message for the athletes. As you can see in the parallel window, she was uh, talking uh, at the very ceremony, at the auspicious ceremony. She said, the young athletes uh, that are present at the ceremony are a reminder that every child, uh, uh, whether a girl or boy, deserves the chance to reach his or her full potential and pursue his or her wildest dreams. Competitors from 72 nations and territories will be vying for medals in 19 sports over 11 days in the English Midlands in these uh, competitive games. And of course, uh, Malala Yousafzai is uh, and has become a symbol for education and the rights of girls' education across the world. And we couldn't be prouder of the fact that she represented Pakistan at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to an end of today's newsroom. It's the last day of the week. So uh, we'll see you, inshallah, on Monday, same time, 7.05 p.m., same place in the PTV World Studios. We'll be discussing lots of important issues that pertain to you, us, and Pakistan. And we, as I always end my show, today is the weekend. We've got two days ahead of us. Be very careful as far as COVID-19 is concerned, as far as dengue is concerned. Take the necessary precautions. Follow the necessary SOPs. Get yourselves vaccinated against COVID-19 at least or boosted. With that, we bid you adieu and have a great weekend. Allah Hafiz.